today. We're at Cider Trail State Forest. We're doing a prescribed fire. It's about 76 acres. And the reason we're doing this prescribed fire is to encourage oak regeneration. One of our top biodiversity goals within the Division of Forestry. What we're trying to do is to knock back the shade tolerant seedlings like maple and beech and uh, because oak and hickory trees have a much more developed root system for seedlings, they tend to sprout back from fire much better. So fire really uh, promotes them at the expense of uh, black gum, maple, beech, some of the other trees that uh, uh, we'd like to see oak get a competitive advantage over. So another objective we have with our prescribed burns is a fuel reduction objective. So what we're trying to do here is burn part of uh, the, the leaves and the branches on the site so that if there was a, a wildfire to get inside this unit, it's going to have much less intensity uh, than it would otherwise. And it might create a situation um, that's a natural barrier to the spread of a wildfire. And you can see that here when you look at the ground. and. What, what, what the ground that was covered with leaves uh, now has been burnt. Now we don't burn all the fuel on the site. Um, the leaves are burnt, uh, but a lot of these uh, twigs and branches are still here, and, and that's okay. Yeah, we're not trying to burn it all, but the more, the more that we burn, the less likely it is if a wildfire was here to spread rapidly. It's going to spread much slower, and that's going to make suppression much easier. We have quite a few tools at our disposal. The primary tool that we use is called a drip torch and it's a stainless steel container and in that container you have a flammable mixture of fuel and that torch is able to be tipped over and drip out uh, proportioned amounts of that fuel as needed to be able to get the leaves to light. But as you can see here, once the leaves light, it's no problem keeping it going on a day like today. Um, because it's, it's much like wadded up newspapers, you know, it's just ready to go. So some of the other tools we use are, are uh, gas powered ping pong ball launchers. And I'm not talking about gasoline powered. I'm talking about CO2 gas, much like a paintball gun. And actually the ping pong balls look a lot like a, a paintball. These aren't uh, just our standard ping pong ball guns, they're actually an ignition device that uses something that looks like ping pong balls, um, or paint balls I guess almost. But each ball is filled with uh, potassium permanganate, so there's a little powder inside. And on these guns they have a needle that will pierce the ball inside and it injects just a small amount of ethylene glycol, which is just standard antifreeze. So if we, I don't want to load it, if we pull it back, if it's tipped over, I guess like this, that will load the ball in after it's been injected, and then on the back is our trigger. And this ball will shoot probably 100 yards almost if it's cranked up. So. Uh, definitely has some range, so the advantage to us on doing firing is when we have a bunch of brush and things in the woods, so you know, behind it, um, instead of walking through all that, we want to put the balls inside. Uh, it's about a 20 to 30 second delay uh, where the ball takes to ignite, so once it's down in safely, we can keep walking away from it, and we don't have to worry about that fire coming back towards us, so we can already be away before that ball ignites. So. Once he hits the button there and it injects, we've got uh, about five seconds where that's got to be shot or it'll start a fire in the barrel. So he's got to shoot it out and, and keep it going. So when we're planning one of these units, we, we write a prescribed burn plan. 
and a lot of things go into that plan. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we think about all the variables involved and those are things like the weather that day. What, what are the acceptable uh, weather conditions that we could have that allow us to one, safely do the burn and two, get the results that we want from that burn. So those are things like what's the humidity, what wind directions, how, how intense is the wind, how much gusting uh, can we have on that unit and continue to hold it. So those are all things that, that help us uh, look at and think about the safety um, of what we're burning. Uh, we have people on what we call holding staff, which is folks that stay behind the fires that are being actively lit and help make sure that that fire holds, that it doesn't go places that we don't want it to. We want it to stay on this side of the fire line. Fire on that side of our fire line is not good. So between the ignition folks and the holding folks, uh, we're able to both light fire and keep it contained. One of the big reasons that we're trying to promote oak is that oak forests themselves are uh, have regeneration problem across the state. So all, all kinds of our wildlife species are dependent uh, on oak, so it helps. We're not just uh, favoring the trees, we're also favoring those type of native wildlife while we're doing this. So that's important. Um, the other part is there's a rare, uh, relatively rare uh, plants that um, uh, are, are here because of a disturbance ecology. Part of the natural system of the area is a periodic burn. So we always see a response um, along uh, some rare plants on these burns. So in a nutshell, that's why we're doing it. We really want to try to get new young oak and hickory seedlings to grow in.